In this video, we'll look at how to create custom exceptions in Java. Sometimes you want to throw a more specific exception than the built-in Java exceptions. The good news is you can easily create your own. You can create your own class for an exception. When you want to create an unchecked exception, you extend the runtime exception class or one of its subclasses. If you want to create a checked exception, you extend the exception or one of its subclasses that doesn't extend runtime exception. Since runtime exception is, well, the exception here. Whatever extends runtime exception becomes unchecked. Quick refresher, that means that the compiler won't force you to deal with these exceptions using the throws declaration or a try construction. So a custom exception is an exception that's created by the Java developer. You can create custom exceptions to provide more meaningful error messages and to handle specific error conditions in your application. Let's create a custom exception in IntelliJ. So I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call this wrong input exception. I mean, there's probably built-in exceptions for this. Since wrong input sounds like something that's out of my control, at least to some extent, I'm going to make it extend exception. And then in here, I'm going to add three constructors. The convention is to have the following three in place. One with no arguments, one that accepts a string message, and one that accepts another exception. All right, so let me create them. And in here, I'm actually going to do not a lot other than calling super. I mean, that happens by default, but still. Um, and then in here, I'm going to specify the string message. And I'm actually going to call the super with the message. Because it's convention that a exception class has these three constructors. So let's do one more. This one's actually taking an exception as an argument. And I'm going to be calling super constructor again. All right, so here's my custom exception. Let's create a main class and use it as well. I could call this main or I could call this app. Sometimes I get the questions why I always call it main. So let me call it app for once. And then I'm going to insert a main method in here. It's just, I just need a main method for it to be runnable so I can show you this. And then, well, let's um, say we have some sort of static method here that does uh, a print of perhaps um, a string. And let's say that the string should not be bigger than 10 characters or something silly. So I'll go ahead and say string.length should be smaller than 11. And if that's the case, we go ahead and print it. And if it's not the case, we go ahead and throw our exception. All right, like this. And then since this is a checked exception, we must deal with it. So in here, I'm actually going to say that I want to have the calling code deal with it. So in here, I'm going to specify the exception that I'm throwing. And in here, you can guess that I'm going to call this code with something that's um, too long. And as you can see, it gets read squigglies. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to surround this with a try catch to deal with the exception. Okay, I don't want to throw it here because it's my main method and that's uh, not a good practice. There we go. And actually, I do know what I want to do with it. I go ahead and I'll just do a quick logging message. In this case, to the console. And I'm just going to print e.get message and then afterwards, I'm going to be done. Uh, like this. All right, so if I run this, the exception will occur. And as you can see in our catch, I'm printing the message that I've specified myself when throwing the exception. 
And afterwards, my code continues, so nothing goes wrong. Other than that, it's not printing the hello, everybody, which is what I intended, but that was not possible. So in this example, I've created a custom exception class called wrong input exception, and it extends the exception class, and therefore it's a checked exception. I've given it the three constructors that I would always recommend, you know, args, the one that accepts the string message, and one that accepts another exception. And then in here, I went ahead and I used my exception for when a situation occurred that was out of my control, and I dealt with it from where I was calling this code. As a last notion for creating custom exceptions, just extend the exception that's the best fit for your custom exception, and don't overuse custom exceptions. In my case, it was not a good case. You know, we have illegal arguments, we have all sorts of exceptions. Probably one of these would have been good enough as well. So chances are that whenever you feel the need to do this, there might be some build an exception that will do what you need already and that is what you're looking for. So make sure to research that first. And having said this, we've covered all the essential topics related to exceptions in Java, and it's time to get some hands-on practice. After all that, we'll move on to a new topic that we could not deal with before knowing exceptions, namely dealing with the file reader and file writer.